Wentworth speaking for Life Impact Church today. The great subject of worship. Hallelujah. Worship. What a gift from God to be able to worship Him. What, you know, worship is like the ability to release what's in your heart. Praise is wonderful. Praise tells God about the great things He's done. But worship tells God about who you have discovered Him to be. So you're reflecting back to God what you appreciate about Him, what you have come to adore about God, and, and, and worship allows you to express love. Listen, listen to this uh, little description here that I wrote. Expression of devotion and adoration. A release of loving abandonment. <laughs> this is what worship is. Showering of affection and display of gratitude. Worship is an opportunity to tell the one you love just how you feel about them. That's why worship is good. And, and when you have worship in your heart, it's a tremendous feeling to be able to worship God. And at the end of it, you, you, you know you've made contact with Him. And you know that God appreciates worship. How do we know that God appreciates worship? Well, Jesus told us in John chapter 4 when He met the woman at the well on the mountain where Jacob's well was and she was a Samaritan and she was talking about worshipping God on this mountain and you Jews worship down in Jerusalem and uh, Jesus was, was talking with this lady upon the mountain and he said, you know, God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and truth. And he was saying to the lady, worships pretty much now, from now on, isn't going to be about time or place. It's about heart. And so he said, worship from the heart is what God's looking for. And I want to talk about what God is looking for, that God is seeking worshipers. So he inhabits praises, the Bible tells us that, but he certainly inhabits worship and he certainly appreciates it. And when you're worshiping out of your heart to God, when you're just doing what you do, you can be assured that the heavenly father is listening. You can be sure that heaven itself is listening. Let me give you a couple of scriptures and I'm going to tell you a, a life example of something that happened once in our church. I want to address a couple of problems that Christians experience that block them from worship. And maybe today is their day to be released. It could be your day for release from that curse over your life that just causes you to sit down when everybody else is having fun, lifting up their hands, lifting up their hearts to worship God. But somehow you can't do that. And uh, that's a problem for you and it shouldn't exist in your life. And I believe God can set you free from that. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Psalms and talk about what the psalmist said in, cha in chapter 96, verse 9 of Psalms. Let's read it together. It says, I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Think of that word beauty. What does that mean? What, what, what does it mean, beauty, beauty of holiness? Okay, I want to worship God, but, but what, what, this is, the, end, this is the, the, the key here, beauty of holiness. Well, what is that? Well, there's another verse in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3, that gives us another point. It says, God gives them beauty for ashes, beauty for ashes. So there's two Old Testament messages there speaking about this subject, beauty. In the New Testament, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul tells us that when we are born again, we are a new creation. There's parts in the Bible that tell us that God gives us a new heart, a heart uh, that can respond to God, a new heart. Hallelujah. Not one calloused, not one destroyed by the old life but a new heart. When you put all this together, you realize that the beauty that God's talking about is the very nature that comes into you and that resides in you called the new creation. It's the new you. The born again Christian is the beauty of holiness. Isn't that a good thing? Because the Bible says, worship God in the beauty of holiness. Does that make sense? Worship God out of what you are in the new creation. Worship God releasing out of your spirit because your spirit wants to worship. It was made by God, created by God, put in there when you got born again. 
And so worship then becomes a satisfying release of adoration and singing. That's why I think God gave us tongues so that we could just say words we don't even understand. Just, just because words run out. We run out of English words. We run out of whatever language you're speaking in the natural. But, but in the spirit, th there's no lack of words. And you can just say it until your heart is satisfied. Did you get it? The beauty of holiness is the new heart that Jesus was alluding to with the Samaritan woman. And what the psalmist and what Isaiah said was going to happen. That God will give them beauty for ashes. You don't need to sing to God out of ashes, out of the disappointment of the past. You don't need to sing to God out of the, the old nature because he's not listening to that. He's not interested in that at all. He's excited to hear what's coming out of you when you open your mouth in church or in a group or on your own, on a train, in a car, on a bus, on the beach, whatever you're doing. He, he's excited when you, when you begin to worship because heaven stops to listen in. It's good. It's holy. The holiness that you have is embedded in your beauty. It's a gift from God. You can throw it away, but you better repent quick because God wants to give it back to you. You can't create holiness. It's a gift. You can't create this beauty. It's, it's God's given it to you. It's, it's your heavenly nature. God wants you to sing out of that. And, and it's acceptable to heaven when you sing out of that. It's, it's a blessing to God. And he wants to bless you. And he, you know full well from your own experience that when God often shows up in a meeting or, or a group, or it's, it's usually uh, when you're worshipping or, or a little bit after. Isn't that great? It's wonderful. I remember a time years ago in our church, could have been nearly 20 years ago, I remember Joanne Smith was song leading and Francis was playing the piano and the band was, he, they were just worshipping God and it was a Sunday morning and there could have been, I don't know, 100 people say, I don't remember. But I do remember this. It, it was just a, a good meeting, you know. I, I, I wouldn't have put it down amongst the great meetings because you tend to remember those. But this was just, just good. And people were worshipping and, and uh, doing, doing what we do every Sunday and, and enjoying it. Then all of a sudden the sound came. And it, it, the, this indescribable noise, but it was heavenly. It had no beat to it, but it had a rhythm. And it just took over. And, and all of a sudden I, nobody could hear Joe singing on the microphone. Nobody could hear Francis on the piano or, or the drummer. The, the sound of the music team was drowned out by this orchestra of sound coming from another place, coming from another realm. And for 20 minutes, we were lost in this indescribable glory that had surrounded us. And the angels came into that room that we couldn't see them, but we could certainly hear their voices. And, you know, it, afterwards, only 80% of the church said they heard it. And I was astonished that 20% never heard a thing. <laughs> Isn't that odd? <laughs> I thought it was odd. I thought that was more odd than the 80% that did. Anyway, I, 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 after a while, the, the sound began to lift and quieten off. And, and as it did, you could, I could hear John Smith screaming into a microphone, glory, glory, glory. I could see Frances playing, just playing on her piano. <laughs> just lost and and the sound came back to just us and people were just in shock at the presence of the angels and and you know it, it, we we never caught it on tape we 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 did capture the music so we could hear what people were saying but we couldn't hear the angels and so it's just hearsay but the beautiful thing is i've never forgotten that meeting i've never forgotten that the sound of heaven and the angels that just wanted to be with us that God must have just said, go then, go and join them. Join them, sing with them. Because when Christians sing out of their heart, we, we can't see from this side what it does in heaven, what it, how it touches their heart, and how it just lifts heaven, hallelujah. So friends, today I'm talking to you about the beauty of ashes. I'm talking about worshiping God from the heart of a new creation that God has placed inside of you that just wants to sing. It just wants to shout hallelujah. It just wants to express the things that, that we've learned in the Bible and from life about what God 
has done for us, but, but who he is in the things he's done for us. Can you see how good worship is? I want to be a worshipper all my life. I never was a worshipper until I got born again. I never sang songs like that. I had no desire to sing like that. I didn't know what worship was. I thought it was just something religious people did in, in the building. I didn't know it was a, like a lifestyle. You know, worship is like a life of love expressed in just moments of joy. <laughs> That's a good one. A life of love expressed in moments of joy back to the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, God's seeking. He's seeking you. And uh, he wants you to sing. He wants you to worship again. And if you've kept your mouth closed for a little while, it's time to open it again. It's time to just let the voice sing. Uh, you know, uh, this side of glory, I'm not ever going to sound like one of those angels. <laughs> I'm never going to sound like that. I'm only ever going to sound like me. You know, I've, I've been blessed with this male voice that um, I know I can sing on note, but, you know, I'm no great singer. Uh, but God just isn't interested in that. He's interested in, in the beauty that's coming out as I release it to him. And uh, the same for you. Now, I want to talk about people that struggle with worship. Christians should not struggle with worship. You may be in a church visiting and you may not be used to the way they do it or, or even like their songs. It doesn't matter. Um, if you're a worshipper and, and as, a, as a Christian, you recognize these ones of your brothers and sisters and it's a different church, different songs, even a different language. Um, it doesn't matter because you, you can join them in heart, you know, and you, you may not get their music or anything, but the thing is you can release worship out of your heart with them as they sing along. As, as they worship God and release in a corporate sense. You can, because, you know, as a worshiper, you can join the saints anywhere in the world in any kind of church that they're in and just join in with them. And that's what worship is. So but if you're even in your own church and you, you don't get worship or when they all stand to lift their hands, you, you sit down and fold your hands or you sit down and fiddle about with your phone or or look in the Bible or, you know, while away the time while the rest of them are just doing their weekly thing, then you have a problem. And I, I, I don't think it's anything to do with style or expression or it's too loud or too this. You're, you're masking something that you're struggling with. And I've come up with two things today that uh, I want not just to bash you on the head with, but to help release you from that so that you can join in. Join in the party. Hallelujah. Sing your heart out. <laughs> Meet with God. And the first thing, the first problem I see is, is you know, I, I asked the Lord and I felt the Lord was saying, this is one of the reasons why people can't worship is because of mistrust. So why, why do people mistrust God? Why would you mistrust him? There's so many in, encouragements in the Bible to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Yeah, many. You see, and the reason why there's many scriptures talking about trusting God is because mistrust is an issue that is endemic and embedded in the old nature. And how does mistrust come? Well, people get hurt, their heart gets broken, they get disappointed, let down, people get betrayed in life. And because of that, they can't worship if they haven't been healed, if they haven't been released. They can't stand up, so they sit silent because that mistrust is there and it's pointed back at God. There's no closeness to God. Why is there no closeness to God? Because people feel separated. Why do they feel separated? Well, there's no communication. See, worship is communication. Why is there no communication? Well, the heart's locked up. And if the heart's locked up, it can't communicate. If the heart's locked up, it can't express. It can't say what it really wants to say. It's blocked in. Imagine your spirit busting to get out, but it can't because the soul and the old nature has locked it down in misery. It's a miserable experience, really. A spirit of mistrust. You know, there's no neutrality in life. If you don't have trust for God, there's no void of nothingness. Mistrust will come. Mistrust 
is in, it, it takes place and mistrust can have a spirit that wants to reside in this void created so the void can't continue in other words mistrust is is um, ruling your heart and therefore you can't trust God you, this thing won't let you and this thing is legally there because you're still bogged down with the issues of the past that hurt your heart can you see mistrust can just cause a spirit to come mistrust can go worse bitterness can join mistrust when bitterness comes oh that's a bad place to be you know a person that's bitter the bible says defiles many it upsets many people because you can't contain it it just spills out all around you and and you you embitter other people by your behavior and reactions because bitterness is worse than mistrust bitterness is horrible it's like a root that goes right down to the core of your very being whoa you know and and if you don't let god touch your heart you'll have calluses around it which which stop you feeling you know worship is an expression of feeling and uh, i'm so glad i'm a pentecostal charismatic christian because I, I like expressing myself and my feelings to God. I need a whole heart to be able to do that with. So today we're going to pray that you can forgive all those people that have hurt you and hurt you deeply. You can let them go and you can release God because you've blamed him and you're forcing your mistrust back to God. You don't trust him because you don't trust people. You don't trust anybody to come near your heart anymore. You need healing. You need a touch from God right now. But I want to talk about the second group. And then we're going to come back and we're going to pray for both groups so that today we can release people so that they can obey what Jesus said in John chapter 4 when the Father said he seeks those who will worship him in spirit and truth. And you need to be amongst those people. So the first group are those locked into mistrust. They're the ones you see in church sitting down. The second group are what I call the pretenders. They, they will worship God, um, but they're putting on an act. They, they join in with you and it's hard to tell the difference, but they're not really worshiping from their heart. The Bible says these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Whoa. In other words, they are worshiping something else. And that's what religion is, is the worship of something else. It's a veneer, a skin deep cover that looks like the worshiper, looks like the real thing on the outside, but inside. Jesus said, these are dead men's bones. These are like whitewashed tombs. These are people that can only pretend because they really worship something else. And in their religion, they are expressing that they can do it without God. They don't need God. We can just do it our own way. This is the way we do it. And I call that pride. And so the pretenders are in religious pride. And those that are in religious pride tend to worship worship or praise praise rather than worship him because they don't either have a relationship with God. And so they've got a problem. And God is saying, I seek those who will worship me in spirit and in truth. Wow. God knows whether you're worshipping him out of your heart or not. And so are you amongst the mistrusters? Are you amongst the pretenders? Either of those two people, there may be more groups, but those two groups of people are locked up. Those two groups of people need deliverance so they can join the happy throng. So there's no competition. There's nobody looking at anybody. Because if you look at people while they're worshipping, it can put you off worship. They don't often look that great when they're worshipping. It, it, it doesn't matter. You shouldn't be looking at them. You should just be looking at God. Amen. So today, let's pray and lift these two groups up so that there could be some setting free, some manifestation of, of the Lord's deliverance in their lives. If this is you, close your eyes. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. I just thank you that you are seeking worshippers all over the world, even today, Lord God. And you recognize that even the saints, many of them still struggle to worship you. And it's your heart's desire that they will be free.